Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So currently Kamala Harris is the presumptive nominee for the Democrats right here, right now. And there's been a lot of questions and uncertainty over the past few days. Is Donald Trump going to have an easy time against her in the election? Are Democrats going to be able to use this to their advantage? And definitely it's something worth analyzing, but we have polling data and we've gathered enough polling data over the past week and it shows that Donald Trump is in a similarly good position against Kamala Harris than he's in against Joe Biden. And this is very telling because usually it would bring enthusiasm to the Democrats. It would bring energy. You know, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to drum up this AstroTurf campaign that is out of touch with the median voter for sure, but they're just trying to, I don't know, win off of enthusiasm. They hope that putting Harris at the top of the ticket is going to enthuse voters on their side. And is it really going to work for them well, definitely a change of pace is something that gets more people to pay attention, but still, you know, she's not likable, plain and simple. And usually the VP is not unpopular because they are behind the scenes and they don't really get a lot of media attention. So it's kind of hard to be a very unpopular vice president. But Kamala Harris, according to many polls, she is less likable less favorable. If you want to look at the favorable ratings of Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, Donald Trump, he is in the single digits in terms of his favorable rating being negative, which has never really been the case for most of his career, but he's becoming more and more popular uh, by the very day. But Kamala Harris, she's below 40% favorable and she's 51.7% unfavorable which, you know, that's not really a good position to be in. You're trying to, you know, get rid of Biden in part because he's unpopular, because people have questions about, you know, his ability to serve for four years. And then you go from the least popular first term president in decades to the least popular vice president of all time, thinking it's going to be a winning strategy. And while we still don't know how it's going to shake out, and while she is technically polling, about a point or so better than Joe Biden was polling. This is not exactly like a surefire victory for Democrats. It's not necessarily putting them back in the game. And it's just a big, big gamble that they're doing because they know they're in a big rut. And you could look at Kamala Harris's record. She's not even being attacked. That's the worst part of it all for her. She's not really being attacked. Joe Biden's the one that's been, uh, you know, being attacked by Donald Trump, his campaign and, you know, the media for the past few years, at least right wing media. But even the past month, left wing media has turned on Joe Biden. That's partially why his numbers were dipping. Uh, you know, it's it's not necessarily that Kamala Harris is doing better because she's winning over Trump voters. I can't think of a single voter who is going to vote for Trump, even an independent who's like, well, now that Biden's out of the way, I'll, you know, consider Kamala Harris. That voter doesn't exist. This is a ploy to drum up enthusiasm and astroturf campaign so they hopefully can stop the bleeding and, you know, bring something to the table with Kamala Harris, even though it's it's just off-putting to the average voter everything that they're trying to do, especially given all the chaos that's ensuing because of re replacing your candidate a few months before the election, especially with somebody as unpopular as Kamala Harris, it's not really working out too well. So everybody that's like, well, you know, I'm afraid of what's going to happen. I encourage people to relax. It's very true and very possible that Harris might see this, you know, brief polling bump or whatever, but so far it really doesn't exist. And there's so much to attack Harris on down the stretch and Donald Trump's support is kind of, you know, remaining very constant to the point where it's going to be difficult for Harris to win. She'd have to win the popular vote by probably like, you know, four to five, given her electoral college popular vote cutoff being in a worse position than Biden's to the point where it's like, yeah, that's not exactly, uh, you know, a winning strategy. It's not a win for you to trail Donald Trump by two when you might need to beat him by like five because Harris is going to be even weaker 
than current Joe Biden in the Rust Belt, regardless of whoever she decides to put up as her running mate, which she'll be making the decision within a couple of weeks from now. But she's the face of the ticket. She's at the top of the ticket. She's going to be the one that's that's being attacked. And plain and simple, it's not really going to bode very well for her at the rate things are going. And we talk about demography. You know, she's not putting an Obama 2008 coalition together, not even an Obama 2012 or even Biden 2020 coalition together. She might energize black women, but they already were extraordinarily energized ahead of 2020 to the point where she probably could do worse than 2020 Biden with every single demographic. But she doesn't have unique appeal to black men. She has no appeal to the white working class unlike Biden, who could pretend to be Scranton Joe. She has really no appeal to those college-educated white suburbanites, especially because she's openly embraced many far-left positions, and she arguably fares worse than Biden among Hispanic voters, which is very, very brutal. And we could look at this, Hispanic voters in polls, and you see all these polls. Donald Trump is either neck and neck or winning some of these polls, but you take them on average— you know, Kamala Harris's best uh, poll has her up with Hispanic voters by 12 points, and it's probably the most liberal poll in the country with NPR Marist. You know, if Donald Trump loses Hispanics by just 12, he's probably going to be winning the election, period, so long as he's constant among all other demographics, because he lost Hispanics by, you know, close to 30 points, give or take a few, in 2020. But you look at this, Kamala Harris leads in the polling aggregate with Hispanics by 5.8%. To put things in perspective, for the 2020 election for the entire country, Joe Biden led the final aggregate by, you know, a couple points more than that. And this is just Hispanic voters, a usually reliable liberal voting bloc that represents 10% of the country. And then you look at the polls with Biden because people will be like, well, what if polls are just overestimating Hispanics because they technically have, but Biden led the polling with them by 27 points. You know, the final margin among Hispanics was roughly give or take Biden plus 30. So even if you apply a polling error, even if she wins them by 10, even if she wins them by 15 and Trump cracks 40, Trump is likely setting a record for a Republican presidential candidate with Hispanics. I think Bush, too, actually set the record. You know, the initial exit poll said 44. They revised it down to, I think, 40 or 41, which was more accurate. Could have even been a little bit lower than that. And he was promising amnesty. Trump is promising uh, mass deportations, but still he's using it to his advantage because the political climate has vastly changed since then. And he's polling much better uh, against Harris in some of these polls with Hispanics than Biden was polling. Kamala Harris has struggled with Hispanics her entire political career. She lost them in her Senate race in California back in 2016, although she was going up against another uh, Democrat, although that Democrat was lesser known. But still, you look at it, and it's just like she's always had this issue. She's struggling, but it's not just Hispanics. I mean, this is one uh, you know, crack in the foundation. She's losing Hispanic men outright in, in a lot of these polls, but, you know, also the white working class. That's the uh, basically majority of the electorate in some of these key Rust Belt swing states. It's also the plurality largest electorate in the country if you just take every major racial group and divide whites by their education. It's like 43, give or take, percent of the electorate. And Trump energizes them unlike any other candidate. And you put Kamala Harris on the other side, he's going to do even better than he usually does. Conventional wisdom would you know, expect that. And I think Democrats are starting to take note of it, believe it or not. They're coping hard, but this is basically what it is. Kamala Harris running a bizarre terminally online campaign you know, with these weird, like, little euphemisms like the coconut tree. Nobody even knows what it means. And her word salads and the average white working class voter is going to be like, what the F is this? What are you talking about? Well, Donald Trump's out there talking about secure the border, bring back the American dream. It's just night and day in terms of the messaging and you're seeing it unfold. They're replacing Biden with somebody who possibly has the ability to do worse than Biden, especially in the swing states 
that matter, even if she is going to coalesce and enthuse some partisan Democrats who, for the past few weeks, have been demoralized. Of course, they're going to be hyping her up because they finally have a glimmer of hope, even if that glimmer of hope is going to be short-lived. And it'll be interesting to see how Trump pivots and how the Republicans are going to pivot to attacking her versus attacking Biden. I will say that while it is true that Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, Democrats will say you can never say it, even though Biden himself has said it in numerous occasions. They pretend like that never happened. Even though she does have a checkered personal life and story about how she first entered politics, we don't need to mention it. We'll keep it uh, PG-13 in this video. But I think that those are kind of just distractions to a certain extent. And I think Democrats want us to hit that just so they can be like, oh, well, this is horrible, and then drum up this false enthusiasm behind Kamala Harris or sympathy, even though the attacks are true. But I think that it's more important that we attack her based on policy. And I'll be doing an expose within the next coming days about all of the horrendous, atrocious things that she supported that we need to be attacking her on first and foremost. Because attack her on her merits, it's true. She didn't get by on her merits. So when you attack her on her merits, it just makes her look like she has none. The voters can put two and two together and you kind of absolve yourself of any controversy in the process. Democrats understand that they're in a lot of trouble. There's a rumor that Obama hasn't endorsed her yet because he doesn't think she can beat Trump. And I don't know if this report is accurate. It's from the New York Post who, you know, usually gets discredited and then gets found out to be more accurate than the original expectation. So who really knows what's happening? It is true Obama hasn't endorsed her, but she has all the delegates. She has the support of the Clintons. She has Biden's support, the entire Democrat apparatus. It's unlikely they'll be able to force her out or, or replace her or what the deal is with this. It could be a false report. But either way, it is true that deep down Democrats know that they are in quite a bit of trouble regardless of whoever they put up to be their nominee. And they chose the one person who possibly could do even worse than current Joe Biden. And polling is reflecting that. Despite the fact that Harris hasn't been the one being attacked by the media on both sides for the past month, she's only doing, what, a point better? And Republicans have yet to fully just unleash the beast known as these attack ads and get the people acquainted with Kamala Harris and set the narrative. So hopefully they can do that because it is true we can't take this challenge lightly, but there's so much ammunition. If we happen to mess this up, we deserve to lose and we'll lose our country as a result. So everybody needs to get involved and vote and do their part. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.